a new beginning. I wanted to show you that, not just because it's a cool commercial and one of my favorite ones, but because of the message there of just doing okay. And as we begin our new year, we're, we're about to end January, we're moving into February, and for the rest of the year, we're going to be looking at what God has for us, that what we give and how much focus we give is what God is going to be concerned about in us. So Just Okay is the title of my message today. I want you to take your Bibles, if you will, and look over in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to be reading verse 31. Now in chapter 10, Paul is addressing the idea of freedoms that we have as Christians, the freedoms that we have that uh, we can do uh, all the things that we desire. God has given us freedom, but then he wants to let us understand what that freedom is used for. So today as we move forward into this series, I want us today to look at not just doing okay, just okay. Let's go ahead and stand and read uh, in honor of reading God's word this morning. Verse 31, just that little, little scripture there. He encourages today, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Father, we thank you and we, we love you for all that you've done for us. And God, that we know that you loved us first. And Lord, as we, as we continue on in our worship service, I pray, Father, that the sweet spirit that we felt as we were singing would continue, Lord, as we now open up your word and to receive what you have for us. God, I pray that you would speak to the hearts and minds of every person in this room, every person that's watching this, this on live stream, that, Father, that you, your spirit would just envelop us, speak to us, Lord, encourage us. And I pray, Father, that, this, that these words are not mine, but these words are yours. I pray, Father, that this is not my message, but yours as well. And Father, I pray that the response of your people would be as you desire for it to be, and it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. There is something running rampant in our society today, and we see it all around us. And as a matter of fact, this little video that we watched kind of addressed the idea of, of the thing called mediocrity. Now, the thing about mediocrity is now that it's, it's running rampant in our society, the church, listen to me, my friends, the church is not uh, uh, immune to mediocrity. The Christian is not immune to, me, to falling into the trap of mediocrity. Because what, what is mediocrity? Well, mediocrity is of only moderate quality, only doing enough, just getting by. One of the things that, that I, I always thought about whenever I was a teacher and a coach, one of the things that really bothered me was I knew that I had students, I knew that I had players on my team, those ladies, that all they would do is just enough to keep me off their backs. Just enough to say, okay, coach or Mr. Gacious, he, 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 this is what he wants, I'll do just enough. And once I get there where he's not on my back anymore, all is good. But it would bother me because I would see in my students and I would see in those ladies on my teams that I coached almost every year there was somebody and some people with great potential. And my desire was to give, have them give everything that they could. But it would break my heart when I would see athletes or when I would see students or now whenever I see Christians even seeing them myself, people who are just going to do enough to get by. Just okay. So mediocrity is, again, of, mo of only moderate quality. And, and I wanted to share as we embark on the new year, the new beginnings, as I've been preaching now for this whole month, is that we as a church, we as Christians, should not settle for mediocrity. We shouldn't. But the thing that I found out about mediocrity is this. We are much more inclined to accept mediocrity from ourselves than we are from others. Amen? Just like that commercial said, we can be mediocre if we want, but if, if it's our physician, man, we don't want our physician to be mediocre. Amen? We don't want people that are doing stuff for us, to, we don't want to settle for mediocrity from them. Now, we can do it, because I'll do just enough, or I do just okay. But listen, 
We want people that are going to be helping us and working in us. We want them to be the very best. Just in case in point, last year at this time, if you will remember, I was dealing with cancer at this point. And we were going, and, and we were going to physicians. We were trying to figure out a, a plan of action to take care of this. Listen, my physician is a great physician, but I didn't settle for him. I wanted a specialist. And I wanted that specialist not to walk in and go, well, I'm, I'm just okay. I'll, do, I'll, I'll try to do my best for you. Folks, if that's the way he was going to talk, we were out of there quickly. I had a wife and daughters that were not going to settle for mediocrity. I didn't have to worry about myself. They were going to take care of it. So that's what I'm saying is we as people do not want mediocrity brought toward us. We want people around us to be giving their very best. Amen? Uh, at that point, just okay is not okay. So what we're looking here today is we're looking at the Apostle Paul talking to the church. He's talked about the freedoms that we've all been given and the blessings of freedom that we have. But then he says, now from that though, I want you to understand that you are to give your very best. In other words, you are to give God glory in whatever it is you do in your life. We are to be holding God up and making him look as good as we possibly can in all of our lives. So what I want to look at this morning is the idea of glorifying God. He tells us here, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. No matter what it is you're doing, do it to God's glory. What does that mean? That means giving him our very best efforts in everything that I do. Because listen to me, God is a spirit. He's an invisible God. Amen? So what God is telling us here is in your life, in your actions, in your words, in everything that you do, whether it's eating or drinking or whatever it is, give God glory by showing people a visible God in you. Does not mean we're God. Amen? Don't go take, oh, preacher said we're supposed to be God. No. But I am supposed to be showing to the people around me what God is like. Jesus came, and what did Jesus do? Jesus claimed to be God because he was God, and he put a physical body to God so that we could follow that. And now he says, whatever you do, give me glory in it. Show people me by you, by whatever it is you do. So giving him our very best. The Bible tells us Deuteronomy 6, 5, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That's how we're supposed to do it. The key words in there are all. Not that you notice he didn't say give the Lord, love the Lord your God with some of your heart, some of your soul, and with some of your strength. What did he say? All. How much is all? All. All is all. Not anything left over. We don't do it just enough to get by. We don't do it, oh well, we just got to do enough to keep God happy. We got to do it enough to, to, to say God says, okay, well, you did okay. No, we're to love the Lord our God with all of our heart. You know what the heart means? That means our emotions. That means putting everything into it. That means get, getting and, and, and reaching deep down inside and say, God, I want to give you every ounce of me, all of my emotions. I want to give to you. I don't want to hold anything back. God, I don't want to walk around like I'm just going through the motions. I don't want to walk into worship and just kind of be there. I don't want to walk into a ministry and just kind of do something. God, I want to, I want to give you all of it. Man, I want to put everything of me into it. Man, one of the things is, is even as a coach and a teacher, that, that, that again, that I, I could see potential, just seeing that, that some of my girls, my teams, would just go through the motions. Man, I knew they really didn't want to be there. They, they were just doing, they weren't playing with their heart. My students weren't putting their heart into it. They were just barely making effort. And sometimes I wonder, here in the church, if we're not this same way, is we're really not giving everything that we have. We're not putting our heart into the ministry. We're not putting our heart into worship. We're not putting our heart into teaching. We're not putting our heart into receiving. We're not putting our heart into this. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Put your emotions into it. Give effort to it. 
Then he says your soul. Man, that means sincerity. That means putting sincerity into our lives and, and doing what he wants us to do. Having that deep knowledge and having that deep peace. Man, when I love the Lord with all of my soul, there is a peace that settles in there. Jesus said, I want to give you peace. Not as the world gives you peace, but give you my peace. And you get that when you know God. When you're sincere in your relationship with God, he will then come in and give you a peace that passes all understanding. That is that deep knowledge of God. I mean, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love him with all of your soul, all, with those deep feelings, and, and get to know him in a deep way. And then he says, with your strength. That's my energy. Putting everything I have, committing my energy to him, not holding back, not trying to say, well, i got to coast for a while. I've done enough, preacher, now I can coast. He says, listen, you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. So in the church, we cannot settle for mediocrity from ourselves when it comes to any component of our lives. And we do it at all times. In the exciting times, and even in the mundane times. Because here's the thing that I found out about God. God cares about you all the time. God cares about us all the time, but he also wants us to give of ourselves all the time. And you say, well, is God really interested about some of the other, every aspect of my life? Is God really into everything about me? Well, the Bible tells us in Matthew 10, 30, that the, but the very hairs on your heads are he numbered. He know, listen, if he knows you so well and he is so concerned about you that he knows every, the number of hairs on your head, I think God cares about every aspect of our lives, Right? He is aware of us at all times in all things. And so as a result of that, we are to be loving God and giving everything that we are. We are to be glorifying him at all times. Listen, there is never a moment that we're not his. Amen? There's never a time that I'm not God's. I don't take a a break from being God's child. I'm always his. So in every aspect of my life, I've got to be able to surrender everything to him. I found this quote, and it says, To give God our best, we can't compartmentalize our lives. We can't have God time, my time, work time, or family time. All of our lives at all times in every way must be seen as God time. I can't have, God, I'll give you everything I am on Sunday morning at 1045. But after 1045, man, I'm going to go home. And then, you know, I got football games. I got naps. I got this. I got that. Tomorrow I got work. uh, I got family time. We're going on vacation. We got these things. I'm going to leisurely thing. And God, then all these are separated things that I can, as long as I'm focused on Sunday at 1045, then I'm glorifying God. No, listen, this just says there's no such thing as any of our time. It's every aspect of our life. Every piece of me is God time. He says whether you eat or drink or what? Whatever. Whatever it is you're doing. Now, you know whatever also means whenever. You can't have whatever but not have whenever. So he's telling us in everything that we do at all times of our lives, we have to be focused on glorifying God. There's never a moment that I'm off duty as a Christian. You say, well, you ought not be because you're the pastor. But you know what? I'm sometimes off duty as a pastor. Say amen, that's okay. Let me know you know that's okay. But if you ever need me, I'm back on duty, amen? Amen. But the thing I want you to understand is I'm never off duty as a Christian. I'm never off duty honoring God in whatever I'm doing, whenever I'm doing it. I am to honor God in everything that I do and everything that I say. Never off duty. So I do it. By glorifying God, giving him uh, my best, you ought to be giving him your best at all times so that we might hear, well done. Well done. 
one day we're all going to stand before God, all of us, okay? We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And the Bible says we're going to give an account for all the things that we did in this body, whether it be good or bad. So one day I'm going to stand before my Jesus. You're all going to stand before your Jesus. And we're going to be looked at, at all the things that we did. And did I glorify God in all my ways at all times? And then I want to be able to hear, as the Bible says in Matthew 25, 21, his master said to him, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. We ought to want to hear that, not to, not to find favor in God, not to, not to uh, win favor or win more prizes from him, but because of what he's done for us, because of everything that he's done for me. I want to hear from him as he looks and says, did you bring me glory in all things that you did? I don't want to hear him say, well, Harold, you did okay. You did okay. Not, not great. But you didn't, yeah, you did okay. I don't want to hear that from him. Now I want to hear, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. But we're going to hear it, and we should want to hear it as individuals. As individuals, we're going to stand before God, and we ought to want to hear him say, well done. I want to be able to say, as I stand here today, that I don't want my my. my my, my dedication to him to be okay. Well, my dedication's okay. My, my giving, eh, it's okay. My worship, yeah, we did okay today. I, I did okay. My quiet time, well, I did okay in my quiet time. My planning, if we're teachers or, 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 or preachers or whatever it is we do, well, my planning, eh, it was okay. My teaching today, my preparation, well, it was okay. I, I looked at it before I stepped into class Sunday morning. That was okay. My deaconing, nah, my deaconing was okay. My teaching was okay. My sharing of Jesus, well, it's okay. But look who we're doing it for. It may be okay for you, it may be okay for me, it may be okay for us, but listen, where he says, do not do it for your glory, do not do it for anybody else's glory, let it be okay with him, but you give me your best. Give me your best. So but we're not only going to hear it as individuals, but also as a church. Are we as a church... Being mediocre in the things that we do. Are we striving, to, as, as I've shared with you so many times, my goal as pastor of First Baptist West is to not get First Baptist West to be the biggest church in Lawton. I don't care about that. What I care about, though, is that we're most effective. That we're reaching people for Jesus. That we're proclaiming the gospel. We're ministering to those who are hungry. We're, we're ministering to those who are poor. We're ministering to those who are in need. We're taking care of people. We're showing the world. We're showing Lawton a body, physical body of God through us. That now we can be as a church to hear, well done, First Baptist West. Well done. And so we need to look around and say, what well, is our planning? Are the things that we're doing as a church, are the things that we're desiring for God to be glorified through us, are we giving it all that we have? What about our building? Is our building all that it could possibly be? Are we using it in ways that, that we really need to be using it? What about our outreach? Is our outreach wonderful? Is it amazing? Are we telling people about Jesus? Uh, what about our fellowship? Is our fellowship just okay? Are we fellowshipping together, growing and encouraging one another? What about that spirit? Man, what about the spirit of First Baptist West? Is it just okay? Or is, man, is it God's spirit working, being manifested through us? What about our outlook? What about the things that we desire for our church? Is it, is it the best we got? Is it the best we could do? Or is it just okay? Are we putting that much effort into it? Because we have to hear, well done. And that's my goal for myself. That's my goal for this church, is that we could hear one day, standing before God, well done, Harold. Well done, First Baptist West. You were faithful to me. You glorified me in all your ways. You didn't settle for mediocrity. You didn't settle. 
So we could say today, well done. Or hear from God saying, well done. We know that God has given us everything, amen? We know that. He gave us his son. There was nothing more. What greater love, it asks. What greater love is given to us, can be shown to us, than someone would be willing to lay down their life for us. Jesus laid down his life. God has given us everything. And that's amazing, amen? amen. You know, there's an old song that we used to sing in church. Some of you might even remember it. Some of you, we, it, it's gone one of those songs that have gone out. And some of you in here may not have ever even heard the song. But have you ever heard, you remember us singing the song, the old hymn, I Am Satisfied? You remember that? And it was something like this. I am satisfied. I am satisfied. I am satisfied with Jesus. But the question comes to me. As I think of Calvary, is my master satisfied with me? Mm. I think there's a reason we don't sing that song so much anymore. (laughs) Amen? Oh, I'm satisfied with Jesus. Oh, he has blessed me. He died for me. He gave me eternal life. He gives me blessings every single day. Man, he gives me a spirit that lives inside of me that I can have direction and purpose and, and have, have, have all this stuff for him. Man, I got it. I, I, oh, I am satisfied. What more could he give me? Oh, but then we have to question. As we think about all he did for me at Calvary, is my giving back Is he able to look at us and say, well done? Listen, we can't match Calvary. We're not even supposed to try. Do you know what we're supposed to do? Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, oh, my children, do it all to the glory of God. Don't hold back. Don't be just okay. Listen, there is a world out there. Listen, there is a world out there that does not need the church to be just okay. There's a world out there that does not need us as Christians in our testimonies, in our walk with God to be doing just okay. There's a world out there that is needing us to be glorifying God in everything that we say, everything that we do, everything that we plan, every purpose that we have. The world needs to know that we are giving our very best. Because I'm satisfied with Jesus. But boy, is he satisfied with me. Man, is he satisfied with our church? Is he satisfied with what we're doing and the effort we're putting into it, the faithfulness that we have? Oh, that's a question we need to answer. As we move forward this year, as we have this new beginning, oh, is he satisfied? Could he now tell us, well done, well done. We don't know when we're going to stand before him, amen? It could be before this day is over that we could stand before him and hear, well, you did just okay, or well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. With every head bowed and every eye closed, as we step in, back into our praise and worship time, I want you to, before the piano starts playing, before any music is done, before any words are sang, I want you to do something. Just just basically what we did last week. The Bible tells us to be still and know that he is God. So this morning... Listen. (coughs) 
Listen to what he tells us. God, are you satisfied? <clears throat> Am I satisfying you today, God? In the quietness now, just listen to his response to you. Whatever he's told you in that quietness, here's our invitation now. Don't rationalize what he told you. Don't make excuses as to why. Just respond to what he said. I trust if you've asked, he's told you. Maybe today he's telling you you need to come to Jesus. I'm not satisfied with you trusting other things other than me to get to heaven. Would you come this morning? If you need Jesus, would you call on his name right there where you are? Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, He's told me of an area in my life that I've been holding back from him. He's revealed it to me, so today I want to turn it back to him. I know I'm saved, but there's an area of my life right now that I've held from him, and it's his. Maybe I've not been given everything that I have to this but it's his. Today, I want to recommit my heart to him. Today, I want to fall in love with him again. Father, hear us today. You have spoken. I truly believe you've spoken. Now I pray for a response of your people for it to be as you desire whether you're here in this congregation or whether you're on the live stream, you can turn it to God right now. Just respond to what he has told you. God, here I am. All of my life, I give to you. And then pray for our church, that our church would be the one that God could say, well done. again, as we saw, just okay is not okay. Not for a dying world that needs Jesus. Father, hear us as we respond to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask you to stand. We're going to enter back into time of praise and worship. Hi, I'm Harold Gacious, Pastor of First Baptist West, and I want to thank you for joining us today with our live stream service, and I hope that you enjoyed your time with us, but even more importantly, I hope that God was able to speak to you and work th uh, through you here uh, with our time together. I'd like to also just invite you to come and join us to be in person here at First Baptist West, if we're within driving distance. If not, continue to join us with our live stream service, and also you can go to our YouTube page, and we'll be able to have our uh, sermons outlines there as well. But we want to thank you again for coming. And if you have any questions or prayer requests or anything that I can do to help you, uh, please contact me here at the church and, and I'll get back with you as soon as we can. And we again hope you have a great day and God bless you.